Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial. Before we get started, I want to let you know that you can find all the code examples and resources we'll be using today in the GitHub repository linked in the video description below. This repository serves as a valuable companion to the tutorial, allowing you to follow along, experiment, and explore the code on your own time. Hello, coding dream weavers. The journey through Next.js caching quirks been there, right? But fear not. Understanding these intricacies is like unlocking the superpowers of Next.js. So let's embark on this adventure together. We'll unravel the mysteries of data caching, making it less a head scratcher and more like a friendly companion on your quest to boost user experiences. So buckle up and let's master in this concept and having the power to apply them in your project is like the feeling Mesner experienced when conquering the every summit. Uh, but mastering cache is a really good sensation. Trust me, it's a sense of achievement. For this crucial topic of caching, I've crafted a dedicated sub tutorial within my comprehensive Next.js course. This series is divided into five chapters. Okay, we'll, mm, with each chapter strategically designed to delve into core concept. In this first one, we'll progressively explore and implement each caching mechanism, live coding sessions in the upcoming chapters from 2 to 5. Okay, so in default behavior, you have to know that Next.js optimizes performance and cost by caching extensively. Routes are statically rendered at build time, and you know that, generating HTML pages that are cached. So when a user first visits a static route, the cached HTML is served reducing server load, so data requests are also cached, enhancing performance. Opting out of caching is possible for a specific route or data fetching scenarios, but providing flexibility for customization. So first concept, you have to know that data can be cached on the client, and it's just for a session, and data can be persistent cached on the server. Okay, depending on the specific needs. So here's is a high level overview of the different caching mechanisms and their purpose. I think this diagram, if you already take a look around Next.js official documentation, okay, this is really well organized and explain really well all the caching mechanism in Next.js. So let's discover together step by step with the next chapters also by coding, with some demo, with some, we will create some element in Next.js just to uh, demonstrate how it works. We have four different caching mechanisms, okay? So we have the full route cache, the router cache, the data cache, and the request memoization. Uh, you can see all here in this uh, schema. Uh, as, as you can see, this part is from the client, so the, the router cache mechanism happen on the client and all the other mechanisms happen on the server. So this is pers persistent actually, and this is just temporary and depend on the user session. Let's start with the first mechanism, the full route cache. Actually, Next.js streamlines the process by automatically rendering and caching routes during the build time. Okay, so the full route cache is going to be built during the build time. Okay, this optimization ensures that cache routes are served, eliminating the need to render on the server for every request and consequently leading to quicker page loads. Okay, so to grasp the mechanism of the full route cache, it proves beneficial to delve into React's rendering mechanism and discover how Next.js efficiently cache the outcomes. So, first of all, you have to know the difference between the RSC payload and HTML. So, when we launch the build, actually, Next.js will create an RSC payload and an HTML to serve to the future browsers that are going to request the data, going to request the route load. As you can see here, it serve it create an HTML and RSC payload that is going to be stored on the server and is going to be stored in the next folder that we will see later is on the server and the purpose is to reduce rendering cost and improve performance. The duration is persistent, okay? And it can be revalidated and we will also uh, understand what re revalidation mean, means and why it's really important. 
we launch the build time, we create the RSC payload and, and the HTML for each route, okay? What, what we are going to do when we build the page, every single page will, uh, <clears throat> if there are some data fetching, the source will give back the data and Next.js will create all the HTML. What is the difference between SC and HTML? So actually, the rendering of each chunks unfolds in two-step process, okay? The RSC is React that transforms server component into a specialized data format designed for streaming, known as the React Server Component Payload. So SC is a React Server Component, okay? And the React Server Component Payload is a complete binary representation of the rendered React Server Components tree. It's used by React on the client to update the browser DOM. Beside the HTML, is when Next.js leverages the React Server component payload along with the client component JavaScript instruction to generate HTML on the server. So this approach actually eliminates the need to postpone caching or sending a response until the entire rendering process is complete. Okay. Instead, it allows for a more efficient streaming and responses as the work progresses. So when we talk about caching, we need to consider also revalidation. As I said before, revalidation involves of cleaning all this data cache here, and we will see that when we trigger a revalidation, we are going to cancel off the data cache inside the, the server, all the RSC payload for, depending on the route that we want to revalidate. So it's actually, this is incremental static generation and is the core concept of uh, all the modern web app, especially in Next.js. And actually the revalidation as I said, it involves in clearing the data cache and fetching the most recent data, ensuring that display the latest information. Just think that you have like a weather forecast website where every day you have to show to people the new forecast for the next weeks, for the next months, for the next days. And you don't want to make people waiting every day when they wake up, they go to your website. You don't want them to waiting the new data fetching and the re-rendering for all the beautiful graph, for all the forecasts that you can see on the page. But you want to do it in advance and store on the server. So during the night, you can revalidate all the route, all the, for example, weather forecast for any CD that you want. And then maybe each route is going to be a, a CD with a forecast for the weather forecast. And you fetch all the data again and you revalidate them, you re-render, you will prepare Again, a new, refreshed RSC payload and HTML ready to be served for the next days. We have uh, two different ways to revalidate, as you can see here, and the revalidation process involves all these mechanisms, okay? It's going to refresh the full route cache, so all the route, the memoization that we will see later as the... <clears throat> third mechanism and the data cache, okay? Because actually, and of course the router cache, because it, this one is going to be on the client memory. So actually it's not affected because it's not on the server. But when we trigger revalidation, we're going to patch the data source again, okay? So what happened here is, okay, I need to re-render this page. There is a fetching function on the top of the page that happened on the server. Uh, we, and it will miss, it will hit the data source and the data source will give back the data that will be stored on a data cache in JSON and is persistent and the, we will get back the data and, and Next.js will recreate all the pages and store here. The revalidation can be on demand, okay? When we need the revalidation, we are going to, to trigger a new event that the, so we can revalidate the single path, the single route, or we can revalidate all the fetches function, the fetching function by a tag. Usually I prefer the tag because it can give you more control. For example, you have 10 pages that have the same tag, the same fetching. So if you revalidate that tag, automatically will re-render, recreate all 10 routes. And can be also time-based. And we will see later in the specific chapter how it works. It's just depending on the time. For example, the revalidate is 60 minutes or one day or whatever you want. It will trigger a revalidation only if a user request the same route after the time expired. Another way, of course, to uh, revalidate, to recreate all the route is to redeploy. So if I launch another build, it's going to refetch. 
And I want to show you a little demo on the front end that we are going to discover together with the next chapter. I will so we will go on the back end and we will see under the hood how it works. So this is a, a little demo that helps us to understand the full route cache. This route was statically rendered during the build time. Okay. So if we refresh the page, we will see that incorporate data retrieved from an endpoint that read different data on each request. Actually, this is an endpoint that every time I fetch the data, it will give me uh, information about cats and it's randomic. So every time I make a fetch request, I will get different data. So it means if I refresh the data, if I always get the same string, it means that I'm not refetching this endpoint. So it means that the data is cached inside the, the server and is not refetching. Okay, when you refresh the page, the data remains static due to a full route cache persistingly until a validation process occurs. What it means that by default, if the page is statically rendered, not dynamic, but statically rendered, the data will stay there forever. It just wait new revalidation. If we didn't set, of course, any, any revalidate time on the fetch, we can revalidate using the pet or the tag, we can use the server action or we can use also the route handler to revalidate the route. So if I trigger this button, we'll see later how I create this mechanism. I'm going to send an API call to our server, to our next JS route handler will manage this revalidation calling a revalidate tag. So if I revalidate, is revalidated, it means that now Next.js under the hood already recreated this route and it fetched again new data here. So if I refresh the page now, we will see different data. Here we go. We have new data here. It means that uh, Next.js recreate us a new static page, elaborate a RSC payload plus the HTML and is static. So if I refresh, it's going to be the same because it's not going to re-render, to refetch or re-render. But if I revalidate, it's going to be a new static page. Okay? And here we go. And we get new. So the next mechanism is the router cache. Okay? As you can see here, it happens only on the client. The term is sometimes interchangeably used as client-side cache or prefetch cache. In this context, prefetch cache specifically they note that the segments of route that have been prefetched. On the other hand, client side cache refer to the entire router cache, and both with the visited and prefetched segments. So it's important to know that this cache is unique to Next.js and server components, and is really different from browser cache despite yielding a similar outcome. Okay, so it means that when I load a web app with different route. Okay, and we use the link, so it's automatically prefetched. It means that Next.js retrieve from the server all these RSC payload from all the route that is that are prefetched. So it means that we have everything ready on the browser. So we don't need to wait from we don't need to wait that Next.js serve us the, the HTML. It's already there, so it's really fast. And that this cache actually serves to store the React server component payload organized into discrete route segment through how the, du the duration of a user session. So when you visit a page during a session, the route will be cached on the user browser. And if you visit again, it will be faster. Okay. So the first route, as you can see here, the route A, hey, the first time is going to be missed. So it will hit the full route cache and it will set on the cache. So the next time on the same session, of course, I, I try to visit this route. I will hit directly the router cache and it's going to be really fast. So how we can revalidate the router cache? Actually, we have <clears throat> many different methods. There is like a router refresh. That is the one that I think is the best suitable for this case. I personally I always use router refresh for, for specific case and, and I will explain you why. We also have a revalidate path. As, as we saw before, the cookies set, cookies delete, but actually the revalidate pet and tag, they revalidate the cache, but they will revalidate all. Okay, so it's more, uh, it's a method that 
trigger a complete revalidation also on the server. So if you only have to revalidate the, 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 their cache, you have to use the router refresh. So let's see another front end example here. In the part three of this sub tutorial, we are going to explore the code and I will show you step by step how to create this demo and actually calling a router refresh will invalidate the router cache and make a new request to the server for the current route. Refresh the current route, making a new request to the server, refetching data request and re-rendering server component. Okay. Data on the server will be fetched following the revalidation setting on the fetch request. In this case, revalidate is zero. The client will merge the updated React server component payload without losing an affect client side React or browser server. So the state will be preserved. We will preserve it. What it means? Okay, I trigger the, the route refresh. This demonstrates what happens. Okay, if I re-trigger again. Okay, in this part, we get the, the window width. Okay, it means that if I, if I refresh the cache, a new width, okay, because I changed the window. So I get a new width here, I refresh, and this change, because actually the cache will be updated, okay, will be refreshed. But the state is preserved, because as you can see, this second value doesn't change. It just takes the first one that actually is a state under use effect. It means that the router refresh doesn't change, preserve all the React state. Dude, this is good because actually you just want to re-render the server component and you don't want to change the state while the user is navigating. And use, as you can see here, every time I've refreshed the router, this is a data fetched from an SSR component and we get, every time we get the new, a new data, okay? We get a new data. It means that it's not only refreshing the client, it's not only refreshing the RSC that is already loaded on the browser, but it also re-render all the server-side component. As you can see, every time I click, it will change, it will trigger a new API call. And actually this is quite different than the revalidate pet and revalidate tag because actually these only the revalidate tag and pet actually will clear the data cache inside the, the server and will re-render the full route okay but in this case it only mm, refresh the cache and uh, will re-render only the server side component so let's discover together the next mechanism that actually is the request memoization. And as you can see here is actually it return values of function, okay? It happens on the server during the server rendering of all the React components, it happens on the React tree level. And the purpose is to reuse the data in React component tree. It's like matching all the, all the identical URL in the fetching data and the just fetch one and use the same data to render all the other components that use the same data. Actually, it's a good mechanism. We don't need to pass uh, data as props like before and respect the tree structure. In this way, it's easier and we have more freedom to make uh, the fetching. Actually, it happens because React extends this uh, fetch API by introducing the automatic memoization of requests with identical you. So this functionality enables you to invoke a fetch function for the same data at various locations within a React component tree, ensuring that the request is executed only once. Okay, so the request memoization aims to prevent duplicate fetch requests for the same data during a single React render pass. So it caches the response of a fetch request on the server in memory and reuses the cached value for subsequent requests with the same URL and parameters. So actually this reduces the server load, improves the rendering performance. Amazing, right? We don't have a revalidation, of course, for this method because it actually is automatic and happened on the React tree. And just because since the memoization is not shared across server requests and only applies doing rendering, there is no need to revalidate. I want to show you also in this case uh, a, a little demonstration page help us to understand the memoizations with the part four and we will see together how to create these logics on the on the backend let's make five requests to the same url the same api service cat fact ninja fact so the api service return different data 
okay, it subsequent request return the same data, it indicates, so it means that every time I make a fetch request, it gives me different data. So if I have four or five subsequent requests in a cycle, it indicates that Next.js makes the request only once caches the result for subsequent requests because the URLs are identical. So this is the demonstration that fetch the data only once for the first and use the same data for other components have the same fetch request. And I will show you on the backend how is the code. This is different. Demonstrate also that the memoization does happen for different URL. So actually we are going to use the same endpoint, but we add different parameters at the end. So let's make five requests to different URL because it's going to be the same, but adding a dynamic param that is max length and change the value for each one. An API service return different data if subsequent requests return different data. It indicates that Next.js makes a new request for every different URL and doesn't cache any fetching data. Let's explore the last mechanism that actually is the data cache and it's really actually connected to the full route cache because actually this is the JSON data stored in the server to make a static render of the page is about data, it happens on the server, store data across user requests and deploy. In the duration is persistent and can be revalidated. Actually, the revalidation is the same method as we saw before for the full route cache. So we can use the route handler, we can use the server action, we are going to trigger the method, revalidate path or revalidate tag. Data cache is a broader caching mechanism that stores data fetched from external resources, APIs or database, so it persists across multiple requests and deployments, allowing Next.js to return cached data even if the underlying data has changed. This can significantly improve page load times and overall application performance. So also here, as you can see, the revalidation is identical to the full route cache and involve all these segments in our server. So if I trigger a revalidation that is on demand or time-based, it's going to start from the route again full route so trigger the, the data from the source it cache inside the data cache is going to be persistent is going to memoization and we're going to re-render all the route again and prepare html a c payload to serve to our clients so actually what is the difference between uh, revalidate path or tag with the router refresh that we saw before if we go back you remember we see the router refresh and revalidate. So actually, are invoking router refresh triggers a clearing of a router cache, leading to the re-render of a specific route segments on the server. It is essential to note that this operation exclusively refreshes the client side cache, leaving the data cache and full route cache untouched. This means that despite the refresh, the existing data in these caches remain intact. Okay. So it means that the full route will not change with the route refresh. So on the contrary, when employing a revalidate path or tag, um, a more comprehensive cache purging takes place. Okay, specifically these methods not only clear the router cache, but also embody the, both the data cache and the full route cache. Okay, so this broader scope ensure that not only the client side cache is updated, but also any stored data associated with the path and the entire route. I also want to talk about the main differences between request memoization and data cache that we just discussed right now. So the key difference is the scope request memoization is limited to the lifetime of a single React render pass, while the data cache persists across the request deployments. Okay. It just changed when it just changed and is recalculating the fetch request just when I re-rend the server side rendering component, but the data cache is going to be more persistent. Purpose or request memoization focuses on reducing server load during a single render, while the data cache optimizes overall page load times and application performance. So the target is the target is the request memoization primarily cache responses of fetch requests, while the data cache can store data from, from different sources, including APIs, database, and third part. In summary, Request memoization and data cache are complementary caching mechanisms in Next.js. Request memoization focuses 
on immediate performance gains within a single render pass, while the data cache provides long-term caching benefits. Thank you for embarking on this first chapter of our Next.js caching tutorial. Stay tuned for the next chapter, where we delve into the initial caching mechanism. We will see the full route cache in details, and we will understand by coding, and together we will explore the practical example. Caching is really important, guys. We have to spend time to fully understand all the concepts. We have reached the end of this video tutorial and I genuinely hope you have enjoyed this content. If it has been helpful to you, please show your support by liking the video and sharing it with your friends on social media. If you haven't already, I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on upcoming lessons. Don't forget to check out my website, thevergolabs.com, where you will find a plethora of interesting programming content. You can also send me collaboration requests and explore all the programming services we offer. Your participation and support are crucial in my growing and to grow this community and providing you with even more valuable resources. Thank you for the bottom of my heart for being here with us and I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.